Hey, what's going on guys? In this project, we'll be building a React application that uses authentication from a platform called Okta. Uh, I've also heard it pronounced Okta, but it's similar to Auth0 where it's a user management system that has authentication, authorization, you can use it across multiple apps, and you can even have the apps built on different languages and platforms. Um, it's compatible with like 10 different languages. So what we'll be building is this React app called Acme Staff Portal. And the idea here is that you're a business owner and you have staff members that you want to be able to access certain parts of the website or application. And uh, it's very easy to protect these, these routes or these, these paths. So you can see I have a staff area here. If I click on, it shows me this nice sign-in widget, which is actually a, a package we'll be installing along with the Okta React package. And if I log in here, you'll see that it'll now allow me to access the staff area. Okay. Um, now, this is just basically a welcome page, but you could have this be anything you want. Um, I'm actually plucking the name and the email from the token because once we authenticate, we get this token in local storage, this Okta token storage. And then if we look at ID token, there's a bunch of stuff here, but there's a claims object and this has the email of the user and it has the, the name of the user. So I took that out and put that in the page. And if I go back to home, you'll see that the login button is now a log out button. This text has changed. Um, if I go ahead and log out, you'll see it'll change back and now I can't access the staff page. And again, it's really easy to to add routes and protect them. And then on the back end of Okta, so this is like the dashboard, you have all kinds of metrics. Um, you have a really nice log of everything that happens with every user. Um, and you can see all the different platforms you can develop on and use these, uh, this user base across. You can see all your users here. So we just logged in with this guy and you can see the applications that he's assigned to. So in this case, Acme Staff Portal is the only one I have, but I could create something else in like, let's say, csharp.net and we could we could add him to that application as well. All right. And under applications, you'll see the the app. We're going to go through this and create it, get the client ID and all that stuff. All right, we will kind of be following this documentation page. I'm going to put the link in the description. It's a good resource and it'll help us move things along a little quicker. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you will have to create a, an account at developer.octa.com and I'll explain more of that as we move along. But that's it. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you want to do is, is create an account at developer.octa.com. Okay, make sure it's the developer subdomain. And just go ahead and click sign up, and it'll just take you through a process where you fill in this information. You'll get an activation email, follow the link in that email, and log in, and you should see something like this. Okay, so this is your Octa dashboard. Um, now, I'm not going to go through all the, the, the areas of this dashboard, just basically the, the ones that we need. So one thing I want you to notice is the, the org URL, which is in my case dev dash this number dot octa preview dot com. So yours will be different. Um, the number will be different, but it should have this octa preview dot com domain. Um, so we will need that in our application and it just shows you some metrics. So your total users, the, the authentications, failed logins, gives you a nice little system log of everything that's happened. Um, if we click on, and by the way, these are all the different platforms that you can use Okta with. So React, PHP, Node, .NET, Java, iOS and Android and Angular. So if we go to users, this will show you a list of all of your users. I only have the one user, um, but you know, you can add them and I will show you how to do this later on. And you can have an email get sent to them so that and, and this would be, for instance, a staff member, and then they can follow that and create their own Okta account. And then they'll be able to log into your React application or whatever type of application you create. Um, and then we can manage the user. We can assign them to different applications. Uh, we can even have groups. We can put users into groups and so on. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, what we want to do now, though, is we want to register an application. Okay, so we want to register our React application that we're about to build. So if we click on the applications link and click add application, we want to choose a single page app. Okay, you can see it says Angular, React, etc. So we want to choose that. 
and we want to name it. So I'm going to call it Acme Staff Portal. And we want to change the number here of the port. Okay, we're using Create React App, which has a dev server that runs on port 3000. So we want to change this 8080 to 3000. Same thing right here. This is the login redirect URI, which is the callback. So it's implicit slash callback. But we want to make sure we change this to 3000. All right. And then the rest of the stuff we can leave and we'll just click done. So now our application is registered and down here you can see it has its own client ID. So now we're ready to start building our app. So let's open up VS Code or whatever text editor you're using. And you're also going to need a terminal. I'm going to be using the integrated terminal and we want to create a React app. So I'm going to use the Create React App CLI tool. If you don't have that, you can install it. If you're on a Mac, you want to do sudo uh, npm install dash g for global and then create dash react dash app. Okay. If you don't have it installed already, go ahead and run that. I already do, so I'm not going to run it. But once you do that, and by the way, I'm in an empty folder called React Octa Staff Portal. Okay. So that's the the empty folder that I'm in. And I want to generate the application here. So I'm going to say create react app and then dot. That'll bring all the files into this this particular folder. All right, so now that that's done, we can actually run our dev server by doing npm start. And we just get our default layout for the create react app boilerplate. Um, and then what I'll do is I'm going to keep the server running and just open up a new terminal. So I'll click the plus sign here and open up a new terminal. We want to install a couple dependencies. So I'm going to say NPM I or install and we need the react router because we want to be able to create routes and we want to be able to protect certain routes so that they have to log in. So let's say react dash router dash dom. So we're using version four of the router. Um, we also need two Okta packages. One is Okta React, which is the main package to kind of bind them together. And then we also want the sign in widget package, which uh, allows us to have that really nice looking sign in form and all the, the functionality that it comes with. So this is going to be at you want to use the at symbol Okta slash Okta dash react. OK, that's one of them. And then we want at Okta slash Okta dash sign in dash widget. OK, so we'll run that. And those are the three dependencies we need. Let's look at our package.json file and they should get added as a dependency. OK, so there we go. Um, that should be all set. We'll close that file up. Um, now what we want to do is start to create uh, our components. Um, before we do that, though, I do want to use Bootstrap. So there's a few ways we could use it. We could install it as a package, but I'm going to take the easy way out and use the CDN. So let's go to getbootstrap.com and go to get started and just let's grab the CSS file. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. We'll go back to VS Code and we want to go to our public folder and then index HTML. And I'm going to just get rid of these comments here. I hate these comments. And we're going to put this right here. We'll change the title as well. Let's change it to Acme Staff Portal. And then down here is where we want to put all of the, the JavaScript references for Bootstrap. So let's grab those from the same page here. So we need jQuery. We also need Popper and we need the main Bootstrap JS file. So let's grab those and let's go back to VS Code and paste that in right above the body tag. And by the way, I'm using the prettier extension, which is why you'll see that it auto formats on save, something that I would recommend if you're using VS Code. So that should be it for this page. We, we don't have to touch this anymore. And now if we were to uh, go to our application, you'll see that um, some things have changed, such as the font and so on. So it is using Bootstrap. Now I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit. We don't need like the logo. So let's get rid of logo.svg. I'm not a fan of just keeping things around that we're not going to use. In the app.js, we'll remove the reference to the logo. So we'll get rid of that. 
and the app.css, which is like the global CSS. I'm going to just get rid of all of it, but I am going to keep the app CSS file in case you want to add some some of your own styling. And then in the app.js, as far as the content goes, let's get rid of everything that's in the main div for now. So we'll get rid of all that. Whoops. And that just the div. And let's just put an H1 here. and We'll just say hello. Okay, so now let's go back to our application and it should look like this. Just a hello. So now that we cleaned things up a little bit, let's create our components folder. So we're going to go in the source. Let's close up public. And in the source, we're going to create a folder called components. Okay, and we're going to have we might as well create all the different folders and files we need in here. So one folder I want is called layout. So this is where things like the nav bar will go if you wanted a footer or a sidebar, stuff like that. Uh, but all we're going to need in here for this application is a nav bar. So we want nav bar dot JS. Okay, another folder that I want in components is auth. And that's where anything to do with the authentication will go with Okta. So I'm going to create two files. One is going to be called login dot JS. And then one is going to be called sign in. I'm using camel case here. Sign in widget dot JS. Okay, so sign in widget will be that actual login form with um, the functionality and stuff. But login JS will be its wrapper. Okay. Um, now, a third folder that I want to create inside components is pages. Okay, so any pages that we want to create. So we're basically going to have two pages. One is going to be the home page. So we'll say home.js. And then we're also going to have the staff page. So staff.js. Okay, so that's basically the structure of our components. Um, now, next thing I want to do is let's just add our nav bar since that's a pretty simple component. So I'm going to just close all these up except nav bar and app JS. And um, when it comes to creating components in React, you can have stateless functional components or class based components. So you can have like smart and dumb components. In our case, nav bar is going to be a dumb component because it's not going to have its own state or anything like that. But I do want to use a class just just to keep it um, just in case we want to add something to it later, in case we want to add state to it later or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do is I actually use a an extension in VS Code that I would highly suggest called ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. And it gives you a whole bunch of snippets to create just about anything with those technologies. So to create React components to Um, to add prop types, even console commands to do console logs and clears and so on. But to create a React component, we can just do RCC tab. Um, if we wanted a functional component, we could do RFC tab, which is uh, right here, RFC. And there's a bunch of them. So if you want to if you want to format them different ways and stuff, React Native stuff, GraphQL, it's a really, really nice extension, one of my favorites. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do RCC tab and uh, wow, it actually named it navbar. That's weird. It usually doesn't do that. Maybe there was an update or something, but if it doesn't give you the class name of navbar, just go ahead and put it in. And then the export default, I like to move to the bottom. So we're just going to say export default and then the class name like that. All right. So now. We're going to have some links in this nav bar, obviously. So we're going to bring in the link component from React Router. So let's say import link. And basically we use this um, instead of a tags. Okay, I know a lot of you guys that work with React, you're going to know some of this stuff, but I want to explain it for those of you that don't. So we're bringing in link and then instead of typing all this out, I'm going to just grab it and paste it in and just go over it. It's basically just bootstrap markup. So let's paste this in. All right. So and if you don't want to type all this out, you can look at the, the repository in the description, which has all the code. So basically, we're returning um, one main element of nav has the class name of navbar. We want navbar expand small, which if you know anything about bootstrap, you know that this basically means that we want the responsive navbar to kick in at in on small screens. Okay, we're going to give it a background of dark. 
we're going to do margin bottom four just to push things under it down a little bit. Then we have a container, then we have the uh, branding, navbar brand. And remember, we're using link instead of an A tag. So link takes an attribute or a property of two, which is basically where the link is going to go. So it's going to go to the home page. Um, under that, we just have the responsive button, which has the data toggle, data target class or attribute. Um, then we have our UL here, which we're going to align everything to the right by putting a margin left auto class. Um, then we have two LI tags with two links inside of them. One is the home goes to the slash. One is staff goes to slash staff. And ultimately, staff is going to be a protected page or a protected route. Um, so that should be it for the nav bar. So let's save it and then let's go to our app JS file and let's bring it in. So we'll say import. Uh, I'll say import nav bar from and remember it's in components slash layout slash nav bar. Now if I go down here into our main div and put in nav bar You may think it's going to show, but we're actually going to get an error. So let's see what that error is. So basically it's saying you should not use link outside a router. So we're using the link component that comes with React Router, but we haven't set up our actual router. We're just still displaying just a div on our, in our main app JS. We just have a div with the nav bar and this H1. So we actually need to set up the router, which is which is pretty easy. Um, so to do that, we need to bring some stuff in from the router. So let's say up here import and we want to bring it. We're going to be using browser router. Jeez, I can't spell today or any day, really. Um, so browser router, but I want to use it as router. So I don't actually have to use a browser router tag. And then we also want route. Okay. And we want to say we want this from the React Router DOM. And then what we'll do is go down to our render and this div, this parent div has to be wrapped in the router for it to work. So we're just going to put router and down here we're going to put router. Okay, so we want to wrap that. Now let's um, We have our nav bar and then the nav bar we want on every page. But underneath that is where we want to put our routes. So let's put in a, our first route. So we'll say route path equals slash. Um, and then we just want to set exact equal to true because we want it to match exactly. And then we want to define the component that should load when we reach this path. Okay, so the component that we want to load, actually, we don't want quotes here. We want home. Now I'm going to just copy this down and put one for staff. So this will be slash staff and the component will be staff. Now, right now, React does or the component doesn't know what home and staff is. So we need to actually bring those in. So let's go up here. And let's bring those in. So we have home. And that's going to be in. Remember, we put that in pages. Pages folder and let's say home. And then this one here is going to be staff. And also in the pages folder. Okay, and we just want to change the the uh, import to staff. All right, so I can save this. But there's nothing in home and staff. So let's do that. It needs it actually needs some content in there. So let's go to home. And uh, ultimately, this is this is going to have quite a few stuff in it to do with Okta and to do with like checking authentication. We're going to have our login logout button. But just for now, um, just to, to get the routing and the pages working, I'm going to put a functional component. So RFC tab and then let's just put an H1 in here that says home. Okay, so we're just exporting a default arrow function and just returning a div with the H1 of home. And then for staff, we'll do the same thing. I'll just copy this. We'll go here and we'll put in staff. All right, so let's save that. And if we go back to our application, 
uh, should look like this. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to put the main content in the container so it doesn't go away over here. I want it to end like right here. So in app.js, let's wrap our routes, not the nav bar. We don't want the nav bar in the container, but let's wrap our routes inside of a container div. Okay, so we'll go down here and end that. And now if we look now it's in the middle and if I click staff, we can now direct we can get directed to the staff component or staff page. All right, good. So um, let's see, I just want to quickly initialize a Git repository and just um, commit this. So I'm just going to and you guys don't have to do this, but let's see, let's go down here and clear this up. I'm just going to say Git init. And let's say git add all and let's do a git commit am. And let's see, we'll just say basic setup and um, we'll say router basic setup and router, whatever. It doesn't really matter. All right. So next thing we want to do here is we want to start to implement Okta. So I'm going to go to that documentation page, which is this here, and I'll put the link in the description, but uh, we're going to be using uh, a ton of this code. Okay, so I want to start with app.js and like many like like most documentation, you know, it's laid out in a weird way. It doesn't give you like a, a nice a nice put together tutorial to build something. So I mean, and that's that's kind of what I try to do with my videos is take complicated, vague documentation and show you a way to actually build a project with it. But what I want to look at here is their app.js. So basically, in order to use this Okta React package, we need to bring in a couple things security, secure route, implicit callback, we need to wrap everything that is inside the router in this security tag, okay, or this security component. And then we need to apply a bunch of properties to it, including our issuer, which is our basically our domain, our Okta domain slash OAuth2 slash default. We also need the client ID and so on. Um, so let's go ahead and let's bring in that stuff into app.js. So we're going to go up to the top right under where we have the router and let's import some stuff. So we'll say import and we want security. We want secure route. Okay, secure route is used to um, just to do just that, create secure routes that are protected and then implicit callback. And those are going to all be from the at Okta react package. All right. Now down here, like I said, in the router, we want to wrap everything inside of that security tag. So we'll say security and let's end it right here. And then this security, this takes in a bunch of stuff. So if we go back to the documentation, actually, what I'll do is just copy this whole the security tag with all the attributes. Again, you can type this out or you can copy it and paste whatever you want to do. Um, so in here, the issuer, like I said, is your domain slash OAuth slash default. Now your domain, as I, I think I showed you, is in your dashboard. It's going to be if you go to dashboard, it's going to be right in the corner here. So we want to grab this. Yours is different. Please use yours, not mine. I'll actually be deleting this account anyway. And we're going to, going to just replace the whole domain right here. Okay, make sure you keep the, the OAuth to default, but just change the domain. And then for the client ID, we want to go to our applications go to our act. It's actually right there as well. But if we click here and go to general, you can grab the client ID here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. And you don't want to put it in between the curly brace. Uh, yeah, the curly braces just paste it in. 
And then the redirect URI is just going to be this window location origin. And then they're adding on this implicit slash callback, which you can see is um, this right here. Login redirect URI. And then this on auth required, basically we need a function that's going to redirect to somewhere if if they're they're not authenticated and they're supposed to be. So we're going to go right above the class of app and create a function called on auth required. Okay, and that's going to take in we're going to put in some curly braces and put in history. And then all we want to do here is take that history object, which has a push method. So this is basically just like a, a redirect and we want it to go to slash login. Okay, and now this on auth required is set to that function on auth required. Now the staff page, I actually want this to be private or secure. So all we have to do is use secure route instead of route. So I'm going to go ahead and just do secure route. Um, and then for the login page, it's a little weird, but if we look at the docs and look at login, we want to set it to not just component equals login, but we need to use the render uh, render attribute or render property, set it to an arrow function that points to the login page or the login component. And we want to add in our base URL as well. Okay, and then a route under that we want the implicit callback. Now we don't have to actually create this Octa Octa react handle handles this on its own by putting in its own implicit callback function, which is brought in right here. So I'm going to copy these two lines. And we're going to just put those in here. Okay, now you want to make sure you change your domain. So my domain is this right here. So I'm going to grab that and just put that in here. And that'll get passed in as the base URL because this login component is going to need this. And I think that's it, guys, as far as app.js goes. So we can go ahead and save this. Um, oh, one thing we're, we're going to do, we're probably going to get a, an error because the login page. Let's just check real quick. Yeah, login is not defined. So we need to bring that in as a component as well, just like we do with the rest of these. So let's go ahead and do that. So login. And it's going to be in auth. And it's going to be slash login. All right. So if we look at it now, if I go to staff, you'll see it redirects us to login. Okay. Now login isn't showing anything because we haven't we haven't added anything. Um, let me just check something one more time. Yeah. So if we and if we type in staff. Yeah. So it redirects. So so that part of it is working. Um, now what we want to do is go to let's see, we're actually going to create our sign in widget first. The login page is basically like a wrapper for the, the sign in widget. Okay, the sign in widget is going to be a child component of the login. So let's um, let's actually grab this from the, the documentation. So I think it's way up at the top. Uh, yeah, right here. So they actually called it Okta sign in widget but we're just going to call it sign in widget. So let's grab that. And in sign in widget, let's paste that in. Let's just change it from Okta sign in widget to just sign in widget. Um, and I'm also going to export it down at the bottom. Okay. And let's see. So we're bringing in we're actually bringing in react dom because we need that to find the dom node to put this in. And then we're bringing in Okta sign in from the Okta sign in widget package. And then these are brought in these CSS is this is brought in to actually style the, the form the widget. Um, you could use a CDN in your in your H index HTML, but this is a cleaner way to do it. So then we have our class. 
in the render it's just a div and then in component did mount it's going to find the element to insert this in by using react dom find dom node and then actually passing in this component and then what we need to do is initialize an octa sign in object and we're, we're, we're assigning that to this dot widget and then this octa sign in takes in some options one of which is the base url okay and this base url uh, is actually available to us through the props and then finally we want to render the element so we're calling this dot widget dot render l passing in the element which is this here and then it's going to have a callback of on success and on error and these callbacks we're going to handle these functions within login.js not within this file because remember this is a, a child of login and then on component will unmount so basically when it unmounts it's just going to call the remove method on this dot widget okay and that should be it for this component so let's go ahead and save this and then let's head over to login.js now if we look at the docs and we look at the login page which is that's home let's see so if we look at login and I'll just copy this and paste it in and then kind of go through it okay now we're bringing in um, redirect from react router dom we're bringing in the sign in widget that we created which is not called octa sign in widget it's just sign in widget so let's change that and then we're bringing in with auth from octa react so this is basically a wrapper and it's it's similar to if you if you've ever used redux it's similar to connect you know how you pass you pass your stuff into connect and then you export connect so what we're doing is exporting with auth and passing our class our component class inside of with auth like that okay and it's class login and then we have a constructor where um, we're binding this to some of the methods and basically to explain this real quick for those of you that are kind of new to react in a class in a component class we have something called lifecycle methods so render is one render is actually one that's needed we also have like component did mount component will mount things like that which this is going to work inside of okay and this refers to the actual class or the actual component um, when you create your own custom methods in a class this isn't automatically um, available to those methods if you do it this way so that's why they're saying this dot on success equals this dot on success dot bind and then passing in this that way they can use the, this keyword inside of these methods um, but you don't have to actually do this if you if you make these arrow functions so what we can do is get rid of this these two lines here and if we go down to on success and on error we can simply now just change it to an arrow function by putting an equal sign here and then an arrow here okay we can do the same thing with this like that okay so now there's no need to actually bind this um, now in the constructor we have a piece of state which is a state is just an object and we have this authenticated value which is going to be set to null and then it's going to run the this the um, check authentication function so uh, this check authentication is basically going to do just that now notice that it's asynchronous okay because this is this right here will return a promise and um, instead of using dot then and so on uh, we're just labeling the function asynchronous and then we're using a wait to get the response okay so it it basically looks like it's a synchronous operation um, so this will this will tell us if we're authenticated everything is going to be put into this auth object inside the props because we have that wrapper that uh, octa react wrapper around everything so that'll check and then we'll say if we're uh, if authenticated is not equal to this dot state dot authenticated then we want to set the state to whatever it is so basically the state will tell us this will tell us if it's null if we're not authenticated or if we are and we want to run this on the component did update 
Okay, we want to run, we want to check authentication. Um, on the on success, it's just going to basically redirect us to whatever's in this res session token value. If there's an error, it'll just log it. And then if we look at the render, we're going to say if the the authenticated value is equal to null, then just return null. And then we want to return uh, a conditional. Okay, so this is basically a conditional. We're using the ternary operator. And we're saying if this dot state dot authenticated, then we want to redirect. Okay, we want to redirect if if we are authenticated. I'm sorry, if we're not authenticated, then it's going to load the sign in widget, which should just be sign in widget. And this takes in the base URL, which is located in the props. And then it takes the on success and the on error callbacks, which are right here. Okay. So hopefully that kind of explains what's going on. It's just going to display the widget and it's going to add its functionality. So let's now at least make sure that our staff route is is protected. So if we go to Chrome, we go to our application. So this is our home page. If I click staff, there we go. Okay, so now it's showing our sign in page. And if we try to log in here, actually, I don't want to log in yet because we don't have our logout button or anything. Um, what I do want to do is add our little custom logo. So I created a very simple logo in Photoshop. It's a PNG file. Um, you can get it in the GitHub repository. It's it's right in the public folder called logo PNG. So let me just bring that in. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to our project, which I believe is in code prod and react where is it this is that's the old one where, where the heck is it all right let me just search for it let's see react um, octa right here staff portal all right so this is our application and I'm going to bring this into the public folder let me just grab it real quick let's see code dev one second I'm just doing this off screen and if I can find this one would all right Nope, that's not it. Where is it? One second, guys, I can't find the logo. Where are you? All right, there it is. Got it. All right, so I'm going to bring this over. So it's just a logo PNG. It's just something quick I made in Photoshop. But now that that's in there, what we can do is go back to VS Code and go to our sign in widget. And right here where we initialize Okta sign in, we can pass in an additional value of logo. And I'm just going to say logo dot PNG since it's right in the public folder. We can just that should work. So now let's go back and there we go. We have our little nice looking logo. All right. So now we're going to go and we're going to work on the home page. Okay, because right now, if we look at home, it's just a functional component that just has an H1. Um, if we look at the documentation and we look at home.js, um, basically we're doing kind of the same stuff that we did in the um, in the login. Okay, so we want to bring in with auth and then wrap the home class inside of it. So rather than type all this out, I'm going to just copy it. And let's just replace this. Okay, so again, we're bringing in with auth, we're wrapping it. Um, and then you can see that for the, the custom methods here, they're using bind this again. So we can clean this up quite a bit. I'm going to get rid of these three lines where they bind this to check authentication, log in and log out. So we can get rid of those and let's go to check authentication. Now, this is an asynchronous function. So going like this isn't going to work. You can see there's actually an error here. Um, it says async can only be used in a TS file, which is weird and false, but um, that's the error VS code gives us. But what we want to do is use this async 
here in front of the function like that. Okay, and that should work. Let's do the same for login and log out. So we'll say login equals async and then put our arrow here. Same thing with log out. So log out equals an async function or an async arrow function. All right. Um, we can clean this up a little more because now that we're not binding this, we don't even need a constructor because we can set our state without the constructor by simply saying state equals and then our state object. So I'm going to completely replace the constructor with that and that will clean this up a little bit. Okay, uh, now let's go down here and see what they have for the actual render. So basically they're putting their navigation inside the home page, which obviously we don't want. We, we created a nav bar and so on. Um, and then this button variable is just basically saying if they're authenticated, then put a log out button. If not, put a log in button. Now we're going to change this up quite a bit. We're going to use a, a nice looking Jumbotron and uh, you know we'll have our log in log out button we'll also have uh, some text that'll change based on if we're logged in or logged out so what i'm going to do is completely get rid of all this in the return except for the div um, and then the div i'm going to give this a class or a class name of jumbotron Okay, and inside this jumbotron, we're going to have an H1 with the class of display dash four, make it nice and big. And we're just going to say Acme staff portal. Now, the content I want to put under here is going to be based on if we're authenticated or not. So just like they did here. Uh, let's see, just like they did here, instead of calling this button, I'm going to call it main content and then we do want a uh, conditional so if they're authenticated but we don't want this so I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of this okay so this block here will be if we are authenticated this one will be if we're not so we need to wrap we need one parent element which we'll do a div so we'll do that here and here So if we are authenticated, then I'm going to have a paragraph with the class of lead and we're going to say you have entered the staff portal. Click here and this click here, I just want it to go to the staff page, which is that protected route. So we're going to use a link to equals sta uh, slash staff Oops. slash staff. And let's end that here. Okay. And then under the paragraph, we'll have our log out button, because remember, this is if we're if we're authenticated. So we are logged in. So we want it to be a log out. So I'm going to give this a couple bootstrap classes, BTN, BTN dash. Uh, let's do light and let's make it a large button. So BTN LG uh, and then we'll say log out. Now this needs an event because we need to call this log out here, which then calls the log out attached to this auth object that's stored in the props, which comes from Okta react. Um, so let's see where are we right here? Let's add on click equals oops, on click equals this dot log out. Okay, and then if we're not logged in, it's going to be very similar. We're just going to have a div with the paragraph and a button. So I'm going to grab this, paste that in here. And we're just going to change the content of the paragraph. Basically telling them that uh, we'll say if you are a staff member, please, uh, please get Say, please get your credentials from your supervisor. Okay, and then we need a log in button. I'm going to just change this from BTN light to BTN dark, and then it's going to call this dot log in. And then 
we want this to be log in. All right. Now, last thing we want to do is is take this main content variable and insert it into our return so it actually displays. So let's say main content and let's save it and let's go back to our application. Let's go to the home page and there we go. So Acme staff portal, if you are a staff member, please get your credentials from your supervisor. So the idea is that, um, you know, when you get hired, you'll get um, you'll either get credentials or you'll get an email sent to you to set up an account so that you can access stuff. Um, now, let's go ahead and try to, to log in because we haven't done that yet. So we can either click on login or staff. It's going to take us to the same place. And um, let's let's do a login that doesn't work. So it'll it'll do all the validation for you and stuff. But let's do our account that we created. So this is your initial account you created um, in the back end of Okta. And there we go. So now we have access to the staff page. Okay. And if I click log out, you can see the log out changes to log in. If I go to staff, it doesn't work. Okay, but I do want to be logged in because now I want to work on the actual staff page. So let's go back to VS Code and let's go to our staff page. So basically the staff page, I just I want it to be a welcome message, but I want to actually pull out the email and the name from the ID token, because if we look, if I go to my Chrome tools here and we go to application and then under local storage, you'll see ID token. Okay, so we have ID token and then in claims we have the email and the uh, we have a lot of stuff. We have the email and the name, which is what I want to grab. So let's see how we're going to format this. Let's uh, we don't want a functional component because we are going to have some state. So I'm going to get rid of that and just put in a class based component. And let's see, I'm just going to default export default down here. OK, so for state. Let's go up here and let's say state equals and we're going to have current user name, which will be nothing by default and then current user email, which will be nothing. And then what we want to do is in, when the component mounts, we want to grab that information from local storage. So I'm going to say component did mount, which is a lifecycle function or method. And I'm going to create a variable called ID token. And we can get this. Basically, there's a the parent item that's in local storage is called Okta token storage. So we can say local storage dot get item and it's called octa dash token dash storage but what this is going to give us is a stringified json object so it's going to be a string so we we need this to actually be a json object we can work with in javascript so let's do json dot parse and wrap that OK, so that way we can get values using like the dot syntax and so on. And then we want to set our state. So we're going to say this dot set state. And we want to pass in our object and we want the current user email to be equal to ID token, which is our variable. And then, then there's a, a value or I'm sorry, a key in there called ID token. So we want that again. And then remember that claims object I showed you and then the email. All right, we're going to do the same thing for name. So we'll just change email to name and we'll change this to cust um, current user name like that. All right, so now we should get that data. Um, if we go to our render and if we want to just check that real quick, we can do a console dot log of 
this dot state. And if we go back to staff and open up our console here, there it is. So we get this object and we get the current user email and the current user name. So what we want to do now is we want to insert that into our page. So let's get rid of that. Now, instead of doing like this dot state dot current user email and so on, I'm just going to use a little bit of destructuring and just create a couple variables. So to use destructuring, we want to use uh, curly braces and we'll say current user email and current user name. And we basically want to suck that out of this dot state. Okay, so that's what this is doing with the curly braces. That way we can just use these variable names. And then in the return, so return is going to be pretty easy. Um, we're just going to do a div. Why is Emmett not work? There we go. So we're going to have a div with an H1 and we're just going to say welcome. And then we can put in here current username. Then we'll put a paragraph and I'm just going to put email colon. And then we can put current user email. And then a paragraph and we're just going to say you have reached the authorized staff area of the portal and that's it. Let's save it. Let's go back and there we go. Cool. So that's that's pretty much it, guys. If we log out here, go to staff, we can't access it. Um, now, our application is, is pretty much finished. So let's say you want to you, you hire somebody, you want them to have access to the staff area. So you go to your Okta back end and we can go to users and let's add a person. OK, so first name we'll say John, last name Doe. And then you're going to want their email address. So you would just ask for their email address and I'm going to use I'm just going to use support at traversymedia.com. And then you could add them to groups, but we don't have any groups. Password. Now you could set the password or you can. So if you wanted to set it, you do set by admin, but you want them to be able to choose their password. Um, what will happen, though, we're going to check this send user activation email and they'll get an email with a temporary password. Once they add that, once they, they log in with that, they'll be able to change it. So let's go ahead and save this. Let me just make sure that email is correct. All right. Now notice that it says pending user action. So they actually haven't went through and did what they're supposed to yet. So what I'm going to do is 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 go on to I'm going to go outside of the screen here and go to my email. And I don't want to show my email on screen. So what I'll do is just show you what the message said or tell you what it says. It gives you the name of your basically your um, your unit or whatever this is, Traversy Media Dev and then the ID. And it says, welcome to Okta. Hi, John, your organization is using Okta to manage your web applications. This means you can conveniently access all the applications you normally use through a single secure home page. And it gives you like a link to a video and so on. And it has a big green button that says activate Okta account. This link expires in seven days. Um, so I'm going to click that link. And then this is where it takes me. OK, so uh, basically it's asking me to create a new password. And you can have like a security question. What's the food you least like as a child? We'll just say carrots. And you can choose a security image and create account. All right. So now we have an Okta account and there's a ton of there's a ton of things you can do. There's all types of apps that you can use that that you also use Okta. Um, but we're not going to really get into this. We're just using this for our React app. But now they should be able to actually log in. And if we go to our dashboard and reload the users page, you'll see that John is now active. OK, and if we click on his page here, you can see he is part of or assigned to the Acme staff portal. 
and you could unassign him. And if you had other applications, you could assign him to those as well. So let's try to log in with John. So we'll go log in and I used support at traversymedia.com. Let's log in with John. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go to staff. And there we go. Welcome John Doe. And it has John's email address. Okay. So it's, it's working. If we log out, okay, logs us out, we can no longer access the staff portal. So that's pretty much it, guys. And you, you can see how powerful this is because you can go and create another app, let's say in, I don't know, csharp.net or Java or a mobile app with iOS. And you have this user base that, um, that can log into your applications. And uh, just the metrics and all the, the, um, the logs that they give you it's just I, i think it's really powerful and again this it's pretty similar to how oauth not oauth um auth zero works as well and there's a lot of different ways you can implement this you could also implement your own server and make jwt uh json web tokens requests using octa as well so really powerful stuff um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this little project here And um, yeah, so that's it. If you liked it, please don't forget to like and I will see you next time.